earliest memories of my mom. Um, her reading to me and getting book assignments for school and getting tired and then she would pick up the book and sit next to me and read it to me. I was a lazy child like that. So I think we got through all Chronicles of Narnia, uh, Jules Byrne books. Like my favorite, like uh, 80 Days Around the World is one of like, my favorite books of all time. When my mom was diagnosed, I, was, I wasn't I was home. Uh, I was actually in Atlanta doing one of the instructor courses for Alliance. And I was planning on staying for an extra few days and then flying to California for Nogi Worlds. It was a purple velvet time. I was training really hard for it and my, uh, my mom called me it's just like, hey, I don't want you to worry, but um, I went to the doctor and they think I might have cancer. I uh, have an appointment at the oncologist next week. And I was like, okay. And I was like, I'm, I'm coming home. She's like, no, I want you to go home. I want you to go to the tournament. I want you to change your plans for me. I was like, no, I'm coming home. So I called, changed my flight, and I was seeing the oncologist on Monday with her when she got the diagnosis. El, el primer diagnóstico cuando me dijo la, la doctora que era cáncer sin hacerla fue como, como un terremoto, como esos que ocurren en Chile así grado 7 que se te movió el piso. Pero vi a mi familia tan destruida con el, con el diagnóstico que sabía que yo tenía que ser fuerte. Así que en ese momento le dije a la doctora, perfecto, es cáncer, pero tú me tienes que decir cuál es el tratamiento a seguir porque Por lo menos en esta vez yo no me voy a morir de cáncer. And it's scary, you know. It's, it's your mom, it's your person. It's kind of like, it's probably her, she's like my rock. So, just changing the dynamic and like having to be that person for her it was, it was tough. La ayuda que tuve de mi, de mi marido y de mis hijos fue excepcional y creo que es una pieza clave cuando una persona tiene cáncer porque en ese minuto tú no piensas, no puedes tomar la mejor decisión, porque aunque uno se informe, no está psicológicamente preparada para tomar la mejor alternativa. Y en eso yo tuve mucha suerte, porque tuve mucho apoyo de Horacio, mucho apoyo de mi hija y mucho apoyo de Nelson. My name is John Thomas, I'm the founder of Tap Cancer Out, a BJJ nonprofit, We're raising awareness and funds for uh, cancer fighting organizations. Everyone's been touched by cancer in one way or another, so I knew that it would resonate with everyone, um, no matter what. Of course, uh, it's hit me as well. Um, I mean, not uh, me personally, but um, uh, my nephew uh, was born in uh, 2006, and by his uh, three-month birthday, he was diagnosed with leukemia, actually two types of leukemia. Um, so he fought for uh, another six months or so, but even before his first birthday, um, he lost his fight with cancer. So um, that was pretty rough, and um, so he's he's a real inspiration, um, you know, for me. And uh, you know, I've lost other family members and friends, um, but that one hit uh, hit the closest and hit the hardest. I've never felt more helpless in my life. I um, there was just nothing I could do, and that stuck with me for a long time. And once I came up with the idea for Tap Cancer Out, it, it um, was a way that not only I, but the whole jiu-jitsu community could feel like we're doing something and we could actually create tangible change. I saw what Tap Cancer Out was doing and I ordered like patches and a shirt from John. And I remember what happened, I think they got lost in the mail. <laughs> it came about um, with a customer service issue. Uh, where I shipped some gear to Nelson and never got to him. And, uh, but he happened to be competing at the New York Open. I happened to be just going there to support some friends. John was going to the tournament, so he met me at the tournament. And I think I'm the, like the first guy to ever have like Tap Cancer gear on IBGGF podium. Um, so I told him, uh, no problem, I'll just bring your gear and give it to you. Um, of course, he won and uh, was up on the podium with our uh, holding our Tap Cancer Off shirt. And that was the first time that I had ever seen someone like at a tournament representing our cause. I want you to go open. 
and John's like taking, like, you know, he like, I saw him, when they were calling my medal, that's when I found them. So I found them, he like handed me the shirt, and I'm like on the podium holding the shirt. And then I got talking to him, like, you know, I got to tell him my story. It was pretty cool. And, um, and so, you know, Nelson started telling me um, his story and, um, and it was pretty incredible. And he told me he wanted to help. And so, um, you know, we, we had, I had made t-shirts and little things like that, but um, we hadn't gotten into uh, geese yet. And of course, it was something I, I wanted to do. And Nelson um, was creating inverted gear and had these amazing geese that I was already a huge fan of. So um, it was sort of a natural partnership um, where uh, we started designing and creating some awesome geese for people to represent. And so they could actually, you know, fight in, in tap cancer out gear. We're uh, jujitsu practitioners and competitors and we're not afraid of any fight we're, we always choose the biggest baddest dude in the room to, to roll with um, and uh, to test ourselves against so I figured there was no better community um, to take the fight to cancer than the jiu-jitsu community and that's what we're trying to represent at Tap Cancer Hoy en día no asociar cáncer con muerte porque hay muchas alternativas de tratamiento y muchas maneras de seguir adelante que hay que prevenir este tipo de enfermedades siento más consciente a pesar de todo el campañas publicitarias que existen uno en el fondo vive una vida muy acelerada y no lo hace y mientras más tarde te diagnostiquen el cáncer es más difícil salir de él y que la gente también tenga conciencia de ayudar a las instituciones que ayudan a los enfermos de cáncer